Hey everybody, it's Harry from Step Daddy Barbecue, the YouTube channel that teaches you how to master barbecue so you can spread barbecue love. If you stumble onto this episode, which is part two of my homage to Tootsie Tomanes's Snow's Barbecue of Lexington, Texas, you are in luck. We're gonna try to do Tootsie style Texas salt and pepper whole spare ribs. For those of you who joined me on part one, I showed you guys how we made Tootsie style mop of the uh, Worcestershire vinegar, butter, onion, mustard powder mop. We're going to use the same mop in part two, cooking our spare ribs to sea style to pay homage to her barbecue joint in Lexington, Texas. a whole pork spare rib. I'm just going to do a very light trim on it. Just remove some of the really thin parts that might burn. So this one has the uh, brisket bone on and I'm going to cook it with the brisket bone on and the second one I'm going to cook it without the brisket bone. And uh, we just do a light trim of it. it. looks pretty good. You can trim off this diaphragm here. Uh, on the cow this is where your fajita comes from and uh, the fajita meat is right here it's got a diaphragm this is I'm just gonna leave it on let's trim the second one now this one already has a brisket bone taken off that's gonna round up the meat a little bit trim off all these small bits save the extra pieces for soup stock a little bit of silver skin here trim it off okay it looks pretty good ready to go let's go ahead and apply rub here I'm gonna apply some Texas style rub. And you notice the membrane is here. Uh, it's a three hour argument and Jerry Springer fist fight as to whether you pull the membrane. So just for kicks and giggles, I'll pull membrane on one and leave the membrane on the other. So you guys can get a sense of, there's no right or wrong way to cook barbecue. It's just cook it your way and uh, you know, enjoy, love what you cook and cook what you love. So you notice I have a napkin here. Here's a little trick here. All you need to do is use the napkin to get a little bit of friction. Run your finger into the membrane like so. Use the napkin to help you hold on to the slippery membrane. And it slowly comes off. Peel it gently like so. Okay. So this one will pull the membrane. On the other one, we'll just cook it with the membrane on. We're going to use a little bit of mustard as a schmear to help the rub stick. This does not change the flavor. In fact, you can't taste the mustard after you're done, but this is a very common pit master technique to help the rub stick to the meat without it all falling off when you're trying to cook it. This is a 50% kosher salt, 50% coarse black pepper rub, which is the very traditional way of cooking ribs in Texas. You wanna put on a kind of a medium coat of rub, uh, depending on how salty you like your ribs. If you don't like it so salty, don't put so much on. The key is to apply about a medium coat. That looks about right. Pat it down. You notice we never rub a rub, we always pat a rub down. So it sticks. Flip it over gently. A little bit more mustard. All right, one down, one to go. I like to do this at night. Today's a Friday night. We're gonna cook this tomorrow when the brisket comes out of the pit, ready to go. A little bit of mustard, start. This one it has the membrane on. You can pull the membrane if you like and see which one you like better. If you cook it right, I don't think it really matters. Some of the best pit masters I know, like Mike Mills from 17th Street Bar and Grill, he leaves the membrane on. So does John Willingham. Of Willingham Barbecue, these are all world champions, and uh, it's always a three hour debate. So, do it your way. You like, if you want to pull the membrane, please go ahead and do that. Don't worry about it. Okay, flip it over to the other side. Nice, even layer of rub this side. All right, let's let it rest in the refrigerator overnight.
it's 4 a.m. and we're ready to get the uh, spare ribs into the pit. The uh, ribs have crusted beautifully and we're just gonna continue to mop them every 30 minutes or so. For them to be nice and moist, tender. Ribs are ready. Let's go ahead and uh, give them a mop. Let's go ahead and prepare our chicken. I'm gonna cook a half chicken just like a pussy does. It'll be a schmear. S&P, salt pepper, 50-50. A little bit of a mustard schmear to help the rub stick. You can also use a uh, Worcestershire or water is fine, but uh, mustard is the universal schmear that most pitmasters use. It's cheap and readily available. Beautiful Dalmatian rub on the chicken here. All right, looking good. Ready to go into the pit. been about an hour now. Let's go ahead and uh, mop our chicken. All right, time to mop the chicken again. 141, getting there. Check the thigh. Check on our ribs. He's bending, so not quite there yet. Bottom one. Oh yeah, so this is done. So you can see, right, that I'm holding it up. It's very soft and it's bendy. So once it's bendy like that, it's done. Chicken is ready and uh, the ribs are ready. Let's go ahead and uh, cut up the ribs here. It's the first slab. Absolutely gorgeous. All right. So as I'm cutting the uh, ribs and chicken, let me tell you a little bit more about Snow's Barbecue. If you're wondering how they got the name Snow's, that's because of uh, Kerry's, uh, when he was growing up, Kerry had an older brother. And uh, his older brother was asked before he was born, would he like a boy or a girl? sibling and uh Carrie's brother said that he wanted a snowman so that's kind of how the term snowman or snow stuck to Carrie and uh, Carrie's an interesting person because uh, he's had a number of uh, interesting jobs including being a rodeo clown believe it or not and he had to give that up because uh I guess the there was an accident and then the, bu the bull kind of punctured his sternum so he had to give up being a rodeo clown He's done a number of interesting jobs, including being an auctioneer. Now, he ran into uh, Tootsie because Tootsie, Tootsie used to be a person who worked in a butcher shop. And uh, she opened up a barbecue restaurant for many years. And Carrie was a huge fan of her food. But uh, when uh, Carrie had the opportunity to open up Snow's Barbecue, she he sought Tootsie out. And uh, they became great friends. 
and they started the uh, Snow's Barbecue in around uh, kind of 2003. What is amazing about Tootsie and Kerry is their restaurant, Snow's Barbecue, was voted number one twice in the prestigious Texas Monthly Magazine. I believe it was uh, in uh, 2008 and again in 2017. And uh, Tootsie was honored as a Barbecue Hall of Famer by the KCBS in 2018. I was fortunate to run into her uh, last year, 2019, because I was at the American Royal uh, and the KCBS. Uh, KCBS was having its Hall of Fame induction and uh, Tootsie was there, so I got a chance to meet her in person. She's such a sweetheart and uh, she even posed for a picture with me. The uh, restaurant opens at 8 a.m. and uh, everything's gone pretty much in a couple of hours. Uh, and uh, it's uh, amazing that people around the world from Hong Kong to England and all over. They make the trip to see Tootsie and Kerry to taste their fantastic, amazing barbecue. Uh, so if you're watching me do this, uh, I actually cut off the brisket bone here. So the sternum or the brisket bone here is fully edible. A lot of times when you buy a St. Louis cut or a spare rib, this has been trimmed off. This one does not have the brisket bone. So this one is uh, trimmed off the brisket bone and you can get it in, uh, in uh, different types of configuration and uh, different sizes. These are pretty, pretty big ones. So absolutely, absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I'm gonna quote uh, Carrie, who says that the uh, traditional Texas way of cooking barbecue is just salt and pepper and good barbecue does not require sauce. So I'm gonna follow Carrie and not put any sauce on this barbecue here. It's a hunk of meat here, super moist and tender. Uh, we're going to do the eating portion in a little bit, but let me show you how beautiful it is. Look at that crazy Texas style post oak smoke ring. A little bit of jealous devil charcoal to run the BTU and a little bit of the smoldering of the Texas wood that uh, I was able to get from my buddy Patty Sharp from uh, Sharp's Gourmet Cooking Wood in Orange County. To show you guys how juicy the breast is, we're going to cut some tasting pieces. Cut a little bit off the uh, thigh. I like that meat better. So as I was saying, um, Kerry is known as the snowman because uh, that was his nickname growing up. And uh, Tusi has and Kerry have been partners since they opened up Snows, and she's one of the very few women pitmasters in Texas. You know, she may be eighty-five, but you would not know looking at her energy level where she can she can outcook many people have her age. All right, let's go ahead and uh, set up for eating. Wow, this is uh, an amazing treat to be able to pay homage to pitmaster Tootsie Tomanes and uh, also Carrie Vexley from Snow's Barbecue in Lexington, Texas. I'm gonna give you guys an impression of uh, what it tastes like to enjoy a rib that is slow cooked in the pit. So you can see here, absolutely gorgeous rib here. I'm not gonna use any sauce. I'm gonna take a bite out of this big rib here. Absolutely amazing, super moist. It's got that smoke, hint of the pepper, hint of the salt, just, just amazingly good eating. Melt in your mouth, moist and tender, it's just so good. It's got the part I like, which is the rib tip. Rib tip is the piece of meat on top of the St. Louis rib here. I took a piece of the main rib here, which is St. Louis. I'm gonna take a bite now on the rib tip, which is the top part of the meat here. That's my favorite part of the rib. Just crazy good, crazy, crazy good. That saltiness and that smoke. Wow, that's really amazing. Let's try the chicken now. I'm gonna eat a piece of the dark meat. So, mm -mm -mm. there's something magical about post oak smoke. Just salt and pepper, letting the chicken shine through. The chicken is just a tad tough because uh, I cook it at around three, 275 because I was trying to get the ribs at 275. The chicken, if uh, you cook it hotter, uh, you get what I call Costco rotisserie style chicken skin. And you gotta do it about right 350 or so, 325. Uh, if I were to cook this myself again, uh, I wouldn't mix the two meats in the pit. I cook the ribs at 275. I cook the chicken at 325 because I have chicken really lends itself to like a like a Costco uh, rotisserie style type style of flavor and, and uh, tenderness. Super moist, that was the dark meat. Let me eat the white meat now. The breast here, kissed by smoke, not too smoky. The nice thing about using 
post oak or we in California we have white oak also uh, is that the smoke is just mild and a lot of people make the mistake when they cook barbecue to put too much smoke so I've taught about 300 classes and trained 3,000 pitmasters around the world the number one problem I can constantly see in my class is that students uh, end up always telling me Harry when I cook barbecue uh, it's too smoky and I always tell them that uh, you have to understand that smoke is like a spice you want your meat to be kissed by smoke if you're cooking long haul meats for a long time like a brisket uh, things like ribs for six hours you really want to pick a wood choice that gives it a nice mellow wood flavor uh, I pecan is good post oak is fabulous uh, you can use things like a hickory, also a peach, a cherry, fruit woods are good. Uh, I would not cook a brisket or something more than two hours using mesquite. I know a lot of people like mesquite because of the kerosene twang. I went to school in Texas Tech, so I had my fair share of mesquite style barbecue. Uh, not my favorite because it's kerosene. I like mesquite primarily on cooking seafood. So I like to grill lobster using mesquite. That's my favorite. This is a absolutely a bit amazing, amazing snow style barbecue homage to Tootsie and Kerry. Uh, I am still hoping that with this pandemic hopefully being over, I'm hoping soon I'll be able to make a trip down to Texas, see all my buddies and uh, actually visit Tootsie in person, pay homage to Kerry and Tootsie at their wonderful snow's barbecue restaurant in Lexington, Texas. So enough of me talking now. This is absolutely amazing, amazing food. Now we got to get Mr. Beans to sample some Texas style barbecue, see how he likes ribs and chicken, cook the old fashioned Texas way, salt and pepper. So uh, if Beans looks different, it's because uh, he looks more like a chihuahua now because uh, he got his hair cut. So, uh, you know, we finally were able to get him to the groomers. So he's got a nice haircut. It's 110 degrees in Los Angeles and uh, having less hair will probably be a good idea. Ready Beans? Okay, so we have some snow style barbecue today for you. And he's wolfing down the chicken. Taking care of the rib now. And of course he's licking the plate as usual. And I think he likes it. Thanks for joining me for part two of my uh, snow's barbecue homage and tribute. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the episode. Learn a few tips and tricks on how to cook good old-fashioned Texas-style barbecue with just salt, pepper, and post oak. I want to do a shout-out for all my Patreons who have been supporting my channel. And I want to let you guys know that we have a lot of content like uh, Zoom classes coming. We have uh, Q&A, behind the scenes, and a lot of virtual classes coming. Please check out my website as well as patreon.com slash for more information.